Hello everybody, and thanks for joining me today. I hope that my air conditioner won't be too loud for you on this video. It is going to be a scorcher today. We finally got our summer weather. So, yeah. It was around 30 degrees yesterday, Celsius. So, that's like, I think, 90 for you who use Fahrenheit, but yeah. So, it was hot. I'm actually amazed our little air conditioner can keep up with it. It's just um, a little wall unit that's like meant for a room, but uh, my husband uh, has it uh, hooked up with a duct into the furnace and then you just turn the furnace fan on to circulate the air and it actually keeps up pretty well. So I'm quite impressed with it. Plus the uh, more energy efficient windows that I mentioned in other videos has definitely helped along with us properly insulating the attic. definitely no oven meals for a while or if I do I use my little uh, bread maker oven which doesn't make bread anymore but uh, it's enough to put like a casserole dish in there so that's nice when you don't want to uh, heat up the whole house it can use that because I made a roasted zucchini yesterday I went and bought one of the um, barbecue chickens from the uh, from the store so I don't have to cook the meat for the next couple of days. And then, yeah, just made some uh, potatoes and stuff to go with it. Okay. Yeah, so um, our town is having a parade. So, uh, my husband took the GTO and the company car from the radio station to be in the parade. So, and uh, our son went with him because then he gets to ride in the GTO in the parade. So that's fun. Yeah. Uh. And actually, um, my son gets to help with the judging apparently this year. So he's going to love that. Oh, there was already one parked there. Ha ha. Silly me, and I even marked it, and yet I didn't read it right. Boy. <laughs> Ooh, I was going, I can't put a thread there. There's one already parked, and it's the right color. You just didn't notice and went and grabbed a new one, so. Yeah. Uh, doing. Not quite awake. Husband got an early phone call from work this morning, so. I'm still a little out of it. Yeah, I remember being on a parade float one year when I was a kid in ballet and uh, we were promoting, of course, that we were gonna have the Nutcracker at Christmas time. Because of course, do that every year, right? And um, so we were in our, you know, uh, tights and leotards and stuff and it was still hot enough then like they were constantly you know spritzing us with uh, water from spray bottle on our back to keep us cool but some of the kids had to go in the full rat costume like fur and like you know the full head not just a mask on your face but like a full head covering mask and oh my gosh so they actually had um, ice packs inside the costume to keep from you know getting heat stroke like yeah, it was hot, but I wasn't going to complain considering I was in a much better position than they were. My gosh. Yeah, my sister and I, we were in just like a, you know, beginner's kind of class. And so uh, <clears throat> we got to be in the clown dance. And actually they had this um, apparatus where a lady sat in it and it was a huge skirt, like, the size of, you know, like a living room kind of thing. And um, all of us had to run underneath for the beginning part. And then when uh, 
a certain point of the music, we would all run out from under the, her skirts and do our dance. And then we go run back and go underneath again. <laughs> it was like her skirts was like a huge tent kind of thing. Yeah. So that was fun. So yeah, we were the clown dance, which um, if you're listening to selections from the Nutcracker, they don't always play. That and the Spanish dance, I find. They're not as popular, but uh, yeah. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, and we had to run underneath. We had to practice quite a bit as um, the people were pushing the, the uh, whole thing around and uh, having to follow tape marks on the floor. And so, yeah, we had to do quite a few rehearsals of us all running forward and sideways and then back and then forward again. And yeah, but uh, yeah, it turned out pretty well. We actually had a um, VHS tape of that performance because um, the school actually filmed it and sold copies. Of course, this is, you know, way back <laughs> in the eighties. So it was VHS. So like a lot of kids, we did dance for a few years. We did piano lessons. My sister did violin, I did flute. So yeah, I still play the piano a bit, although at a, like I'm an intermediate level, I'm not gonna be a <laughs> concert pianist or anything. Yeah, cause I have like relatives who are, wow, you play so well, I'm like, well, okay but it's an intermediate level it's it looks more complicated than it is <laughs> like yes to you it looks absolutely incredible because you can't even play a scale because you've never done it but yeah it took a lot of practice yeah i certainly don't miss running scales that's for sure And I still have my flute from high school band, but I haven't played it in so long that if I wanted to play it again, I would probably have to look up a chart of uh, how to uh, make what notes because yeah, it has been so long since I played it. So yeah, like I had one year, my in-laws bought me some piano music and they bought Litzt and uh, yeah, let's just say that's way beyond my ability. Plus that guy must have had hands like dinner plates because even with my hands stretched all the way, he would want one where the bottom note was there and the top one was like another four keys away. Like, So yeah, if you have small hands and big chords, you have to uh, like roll the chords, they call it. So you don't play it at once. You have to play sort of the notes separately. And uh, so that can be even harder than just playing it as, you know, at the same time for the chord, so. Yeah, when I was a kid, we had a piano we learned on and then it moved with us through numerous moves. And then when we had, um, we finally had, both of us had quit at that point. So we were moving again. So we weren't going to move the piano since nobody was playing it. So um, I can't remember if we sold it or donated it. But anyway, and some people came to get it. And then later on, we went to visit our grandparents in their retirement community. And the same piano was there. <laughs> so it was like full circle. Ooh. And uh, they finally had fixed the, um, there was the E flat below the um, middle C. It, uh, the hammer, or not the hammer, the pad. So the hammer hits and then the pad comes down to strike the, the note. Well, the pad thing didn't work. So the note would just keep sounding even if you didn't have the pedal on. So uh, yeah, and we never bothered getting that fixed for like the decade that I was learning to play the piano. So you would just be playing along and then there'd just be this random dong note that would just keep sounding until it had it faded away. Uh, 
just got used to it after a while. Yeah, that was an old upright piano. I have an electronic one now, so you can do um, upright sounds, grand piano sounds, harpsichord, uh, organ sounds. And I think they have like an electronic piano sound, like the old style, uh, you know, synthesizer sound kind of thing. Yeah, it's funny because my son would want me to play it on um, upright piano mode. I'm like, but why? The grand piano mode sounds so much better. It's a richer mode. So put this away. This was in my working tray, but obviously I don't have any more of this stitch for quite a while. So we're gonna put it away. <laughs> so as you can probably see, I've kind of got a bit of a uh, vertical break going this way because again, this is the pillars and the colors just kind of go up and down. So I'm just sort of stitching diagonally away from it. And then the pillars end up stitched more vertically. That's just always what I end up doing when I get to the pillars. So I'm not gonna change it now. I've told myself before that I'm gonna go diagonally across the pillars, but I end up never doing it. So I'm not even gonna to pretend to fight it this time. I know what I'm gonna end up doing, so. I'm not even gonna delude myself that I'm gonna do it differently. Let's get this going there. Actually, it was kind of nice because there was quite a lot of uh, larger blocks of color lower down on this pattern. So I got like 700 stitches done yesterday. So that was nice. I wish I could do that every day. <laughs> I would really, uh, really plow through this quickly to get more projects done. But oh well, as I've said before, it's not a race. It's not just about the finished product. I enjoy doing it too. I mean, I guess you better because you're going to spend a lot of hours on it. Because <clears throat> I think I calculated it's at least like 4,000 hours for um, something like this. Sometimes more, it really depends. But yeah, it's a, it's a lot. Yeah, which is why you can't sell them for what they're worth, the amount of work you do, right? I've had people ask if I would do it on commission. But I said, you know, even charging you a penny a stitch, you're still looking at thousands of dollars. It's very expensive. Yeah, so I'm kind of just filling in this uh, sort of triangular bit by the pillar and then I will move the whole frame over and then I can do the pillar and then the end because at that point there's only like five more columns I think or so now let me just see make sure I'm parking this correctly yeah I almost didn't one two three four there Oh dear. <laughs> oh, I hate when it does that. It's like it just keeps folding on itself instead of being able to push it through the eye of the needle. That's irritating. 
Okay. Yeah, my husband sent me a picture of one of the floats from the parade. It looks like a giant shopping cart. <laughs> yeah, they actually had one last year as well. So uh, even though, you know, we are still technically in a pandemic, but uh, yeah. <clears throat> but I mean, it's outside, so that is lower the risk so because yeah we're thinking of going to visit family this summer but uh we're probably going to stay away from the museums and such and such and do like outdoor activities as much as possible mitigate the risk a bit so but yeah we haven't seen uh family for a while now three years and I'd love to see my sister again because the last time we went to uh, visit family, they were unfortunately away camping, so we missed each other. So yeah, I haven't seen her in forever. So yeah, though I'm not looking forward to that drive. We do a 15 hour drive. We do it in one day, so it is really tiring. Cause um, we tried splitting it up in uh, the middle staying overnight sort of at the halfway point but sort of the most convenient point to stop is not really the halfway point it's sort of one third one way and two thirds the other way and we found that you're pretty much just as tired at the end and you know that's an extra expense having to pay for a hotel because we don't have a trailer or anything so uh yeah we stopped doing that we just do it all in one go so we get up at like three four in the morning and drive until you know the evening and get there and then sort of uh recover for at least a day <laughs> i remember one time we did that big drive and then um oh did i do something wrong here i think i parked this one incorrectly yeah okay that's all right i will fix that in a minute uh unless let's see yeah i did park that one incorrectly so um anyway we did that huge drive and then we left our some of his grandparents for a couple of days so we could go and have sort of just some couple time for a while and um that second night we got to the hotel and after dinner lay down to sleep and uh i think we slept for like almost 14 hours straight didn't even move i woke up in the exact same position i went to, to sleep in like that's how tired we were oh man yeah and we looked at um we've flown before yeah so i parked that one wrong I fix that now yeah we flew before but then we discovered like even with using air miles there's so many other little fees you know airport fees and or I mean uh, what you might call it uh, luggage fees and um, just all sorts of stuff preceding fees and all this and 
paying for, of course, parking your vehicle there and stuff that we found. We didn't really save much money. And yes, it was faster, but yeah. Not by a lot though, because the airport that we had to fly out of is in the next big city. So it's like almost three hour drive away. So yeah, you're looking at a three hour drive to the airport, then you gotta wait, you know, you gotta get there early and then wait for the airplane to take off and yeah, check in and all that stuff and ugh. And um, the one time we did it, our son was really little. He was like 18 months or so. Yeah, he was under two, I remember that much. And um, yeah, he has a really hard time like sitting still and waiting. So like, um, because as soon as we got into our seats on the plane, he was just like, okay, let's go, let's take off. But of course, you know, we can't, we're not the only ones on the plane. And um, some kids, when they're tired enough, they'll sleep. He wouldn't, oh, for Pete's sake, what have I done here? Ah. Oh no, okay, I thought I parked it in the same plot, spot, but I didn't. Just once I moved that thread out of the way, I could see. <laughs> Good thing, I would have really sucked if I parked it twice incorrectly. <laughs> Oy. But anyway, um, yeah, some kids will sleep when they're, you know, when they're tired enough, but my kid, if there's stuff happening around, he's gonna be awake. So even though it was like, by the end we were coming home, it was like, you know, mid after midnight, he wouldn't sleep because there's too many lights and people talking and yeah, it just wouldn't happen. So, um, yeah, I was trying to keep him calm in his seat and I was rubbing his head. And after a while he sort of grabbed my hand and pulled it off his hair, like, stop it, mom, it's not working. And uh, we turned the little TV on the back of the seat to a um, commercial, or commercial, a cartoon. But the, the problem was when the, um, flight attendants started doing their little, um, you know, here's the safety things, here's how to use the oxygen mask. They turn off the TV, so he starts freaking out. We can't turn it back on. You know, we don't have control of it. And uh, yeah, so it was just, oh. By the end of the flight, the uh, they let us just sort of walk him up and down the aisles because that was the only way to keep him calm. And, uh, so I said, that's one thing I prefer about driving is, you know, especially with little kids, if if they start freaking out, well, you're not going to have everybody else ticked off of you, right? And, uh, or sometimes we'd say, oh, look, there's, you know, an elementary school, pull over so that they can, you know, kiddo can run around on the playground and burn off a little energy <clears throat> instead of being stuck in his seat the whole time. Yeah. Oh. I remember we went traveling to visit family when he was a baby baby, like less than six months old. He actually did really well in the car for long, long stretches. But um, yeah, by the time when we got home, a couple days later, I had to go to the grocery store and I was putting him in his car seat. He starts crying because he thinks he's gonna be stuck in it for hours, poor thing. And then once we got to the grocery store and he recognized it, oh, he stopped because he realized, oh, I'm not gonna be stuck in here all day. <laughs> oh. He's older now though, so. Oops, come on you. Oh my. All right, don't shred, just come right on through. Okay, there we go. Yeah, it was funny actually. The last time we traveled to visit family, they were doing construction through uh, Jasper. So it was uh, like sort of one lane going each way because they were working in the middle. And um, some guy cuts into the, the lane where they're working on to pass everybody. And we're sitting there just like, oh, you know, what a jerk. And my husband says, yeah, you know, there's there's never a cop around when you need one to give him a ticket. And all of a sudden, woo, we hear the uh, the, um, the siren go. And yeah, buddy got caught. And it was in a construction zone. So that's a, uh, that's a double whammy ticket. So yeah, that probably cost him like 800 bucks. So yeah, definitely wasn't worth it, buddy. You should have just stayed at going, you know, 40 or whatever it was, kilometers, not miles, 40, uh, 
with the rest of us, you would actually would have gotten through there sooner because instead you got pulled over and you got a big ticket and a lecture. So, uh. well, you can't go too fast through Jasper anyway because um, of all the wildlife, because it's a big national park. And uh, so I think the, uh, the fastest you can go is 90 kilometers. So, uh, and in some places it's a lot lower than that. And yeah, we've seen, um, we've seen elk and moose and um, mountain goats. Once had the road was covered with them and you just sort of have to wait till they move. Yeah, you have to be really careful because if you hit a moose, that, that'll kill you. So if it falls on your car, so. Yes, and as a Canadian, I can tell you moose are way bigger than you think. Like however big you're thinking they are, they're bigger. They're like bigger than your car. So yeah, they're huge. But generally, if you leave them alone, they ignore you. So. But yeah, you have to be careful because I remember we saw there was people who got out, parked, got out of their cars and they were taking pictures of it with flash, like right in its face. Like, guys, you don't want that to charge you. And we saw somebody did that once and it was a mom with her baby. Like, that's extra dangerous. You do not threaten, make the mom feel that her baby's being threatened because yeah, they will come at you. Oh, we saw bears too. I remember I was driving at one point to give my husband a break and I'm sort of feeling a little tired, but whatever. And it was like, oh, there's a big rock up ahead and it's looking kind of mossy and brown. And and then all of a sudden it's like, oh wait, it's moving. Oh, that's a bear. <laughs> like, whoo, I'm definitely awake now, my gosh. But yeah, in some places, like um, I had some relatives who lived in Yuklula on the island, the bears aren't scared of people at all. Like they will come right up onto your porch and steal your garbage can. Yeah, because I mean, humans have encroached onto their, onto their territory. There's really nowhere for them to go, right? So if they can't hunt, they'll come and steal your food from the garbage. So yeah, you have to like keep your cans locked up or inside or whatever because yeah they'll just and they're not scared of you at all oh man there was one time it's a big family story that they were camping and a bear clawed down the the tent when my uncle was in it and uh and uh, they still had it years and they showed us and it's like you know that they have big paws but seeing those claw marks on the side of the tent was like holy cow you know you know it's big, but it's, it's not really driven home until you see just how big they are. <laughs> yeah, my gosh. Fortunately, nobody got hurt. So, just scared the heck out of them. Thirty-seven, sixty-six. Oh, look, there's 111 left. One, one, one. Yeah, and then my dad said it came over to the camper, sort of shaking the camper. They had to get a bunch of um, wood from the fire and chase it off that way. <laughs> oh my gosh, great big grizzly. Yeah, there was like a joke that goes around saying, you know, to make sure you don't get attacked by bears, you know, wear bells on your clothing, you know, you know, make, uh, make noise and, um, wear bug repellent or whatever. And then it says, and also watch out for, um, for bear poop. It says it, uh, it'll smell like bug repellent and has bells in it. <laughs> As a joke that they were like eaten by bears. So yeah. <sighs> it took a bit for, um, one of my husband's coworkers came from Korea. He was not used to how much wildlife we have because he came from the total metropolis part of it, right? Where it's like, you may see an occasional cat, but that's about it. So yeah. Yeah, because we're kind of used to it. Like somebody had, you know, you know you're Canadian when, and one of them was said, you know there's one more, more than one person who has hit a deer and somebody who has hit a deer more than once. It's 
honestly, yeah, true. There was uh, one of our old co-workers. Oh, I swear, he hit a deer like once a year. He had to, to commute a fair ways out of town. So, uh, yeah. We almost hit one once. It, uh, it was uh, rainy and it, uh, it ran out on the road and then, you know, froze in the headlights. And uh, my husband had to hit the brakes and we actually ended up spinning around almost 180 degrees. But thankfully there was no one behind us because yeah, it was a wet road. So we just hydroplaned and then it ran off. I was like, oh my goodness. And we even had, um, we put wildlife whistles on the car. You just sort of mount them and as the air goes through them, it's supposed to make a sound that scares off the wildlife, but uh, it only works some of the time. Especially when it's like twilight, you know. I said, and that's another reason why there's so much of a big fine for throwing garbage out your windows because it'll attract the animals to the road and then, you know, cause accidents, so. Yeah, because I remember my mom used to have us like, oh, just throw your banana peel out the road, it'll biodegrade, right? But not realizing that, no, one of the reasons for that rule is so that you don't attract animals to the road. Because, yeah, rotting apple cores and stuff, oh, yeah, that's like uh, catnip to them, right? They're going to come out for dinner, so that's not a good thing. Or people throwing their cigarette butts out the window and starting forest fires. Ugh. Or another one, too, that people don't think of. If you throw glass bottles, like pop bottles and stuff, out the window, if the, um, the sun hits the bottom part of it at the right angle, it's like a magnifying glass, right? It works like a lens and will end up, you could start a fire that way. So, yeah, don't litter people. Whenever people throw their cigarette butts out the window, I want to get out and throw them back in the window. <laughs> so it's like, come on, the world's not your ashtray. Sheesh. And that was how there was a major fire in like early 2000s that was actually started by a volunteer firefighter. You think he would have known better, but it was like, you know, kindling dry that year. And he had a smoke and then he thought he put out his cigarette butt in a, you know, bed of pine, dried pine needles. He stomped it out, but it wasn't out. It was smoldering and yep. He set the whole bloody ridge on fire. He ended up coming forward later for that, but I was like, by then, you know, so much damage was already done. So yeah, as you can see, I'm kind of going in a more straight line instead of diagonal edge this time. I can be adaptable. Changing it up a bit. Now we're gonna carry on down for a bit until I'm ready to move my frame again. I don't know how if I'll do it all the way out here or if I will just do sort of one or two and then move it. We'll see. Sort of depends on how my upper arm feels, my uh, the one that I keep on top. So I rest my elbow on pillows to my left. And so after a while, if I'm holding my arm up and can't rest my elbow down, it gets tired. So then I end up shifting everything over so that I can rest my elbow again. Even though I don't like moving the frame because it's kind of a bit of an ordeal, I'd rather do that and not give myself pain. Don't want to pretzel up my spine. <laughs> Yeah, I think, talking about hitting wildlife, I think we hit a pheasant or something once. We thought it was an owl, but apparently they said owls aren't in that area we were driving, so I guess not. Yeah. Been able to avoid them for the most part. <clears throat> Yeah, we see fox out here, although they're like a silver-haired fox, not the stereotypical orangey, orangey color foxes. Fox was my husband's favorite uh, animal when he was a kid, because he had a stuffed fox. <laughs> I 
Okay, so way back over here, work my way out again. Oh, I just love these colors. They're so pretty as part of the color spectrum. So I kept an eye on my um, percentage tracker and it took me about five days to do 1%. So if that holds true, I'd be done in a few, like five months. So we'll see, but I'm guessing it's gonna be a bit more, more like six, just the way it is. That one was really uneven. Yeah, so I'm hoping when we go to visit, I'll get to see my grandma. Of course, we have to be extra careful. She's, uh, yeah, she's getting up there in years. So, and uh, in their province, they've had a bit more restrictions for visiting. So, yeah, we said we'll see closer to the date if we can come and see her or not. So hopefully, but of course, don't want to risk her. So, if she's not comfortable with it, yeah, we won't. Yeah, because she hasn't seen her great-grandson, my son, for, oh, geez, years. Yeah, we had an 80th birthday party for her. How old was my kid now? I think he was, like, seven. So, yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, he was the first great-grandchild. So, um, yeah, we went to see them when... He he was a baby and she was holding him and she told everyone we could call her Gigi now for great grandma. <laughs> so yeah, that was fun. <clears throat> yeah, she has three great grandkids now because my sister has had a couple of kids since then, so. Actually, no, she has more than that. Yes, because my cousin my cousin also has a couple of kids, so yeah, she has five great grandkids now. How could I forget my cousin? <laughs> uh. <clears throat> Yeah, my mother-in-law was bugging us to have more for a while, but I said, well, your next oldest son has seven kids, so, you know, you're not hurting for grandkids. <laughs> uh, 
I would have wanted to have at least another one, but uh, yeah, just didn't work out medical stuff, so. Yeah, she finally believed me when I said we weren't trying anymore when I asked her if she wanted her change table back because they, uh, they let us use it, have it, so. And she, oh, it's like, yeah, no. When I said we're done, I'm, I meant it. <clears throat> yeah, it's just life, right? Yeah, it doesn't always, uh, doesn't always work out the way you planned. But, uh, I'm pretty happy with mine. I've been pretty fortunate, I think. So, kind of still working diagonally, but all the way out to that edge there, sort of. <clears throat> Won't be perfectly straight, because some of the colors kind of blend out through, or bleed out through, I should say, so. Yeah. But, as usual, as I'm not trying to not close stuff in, it works out. I, like I said, I follow the colors. Diagonals are just a rough guide. Okay, let's see if I have another short little bit. Leave that other column of this color for later when I do that pillar. Oh, I guess I do not. Hmm. All right then, I may end up just parking it and seeing how it works out later. Well, if you've watched me stitch before, you know that I use multiple threads sometimes. Works out. Yeah, so now that we're gonna planning to visit family, I have to uh, finish. I was making a sweater for my mother-in-law, knitting her a sweater that's kind of, you know, sat there for a while because of course, couldn't see each other for a while so I'm on the sleeves now so I'm just about done one and then I'll do the other so yeah I've been working on that at night trying to get that done so that I can uh, finally give that to her yeah she bought me the yarn and then I just made it for her as a gift <clears throat> I don't like knitting sleeves. They take longer. Because I like to knit things in the round and of course sleeves are not that big so I use like two circular needles. And so you're moving stitches around a lot, <clears throat> not just knitting them. So yeah, it goes a bit slower than the body because with the body you just kind of go round and round and you don't really have to rearrange how the stitches are on your needles that much so but, uh, the nice thing is because I do sleeves last that means I'm almost done <laughs> yeah it was funny the one year we did go to visit our family around Christmas time. And, um, you know, we live where there's lots of snow. And where they live, it doesn't snow that much. So I thought, well, hey, at least we'll get away from the snow. They ended up having more snow than we did. And it was bad because they're not used to having that much snow. So they actually had to plow it and truck it out of town. Because otherwise, um, the streets were too narrow. There was nowhere to plow it. And it would have... Um, flooded everything when it melted because their drains were not built to uh to have that much influx of uh of snow water so yeah <clears throat> yeah since we've been here we moved out to the prairies in 2004 we had one christmas that didn't have snow i think that was 2011 
Don't quote me on that. Yeah, of course we got snow in the new year, but uh, yeah, we had no snow that, that Christmas. We'd had a little bit earlier, but then it had melted. So, cause yeah, our first few snowfalls generally don't stick. It warms up again and melts them, but once you get usually to around December, then that snow is going to be there until the thaw. Usually. Okay. All right. So a bit of color changing here. Just because of the way the colors go. So I don't know if I'm going to bring stitching on the trip. I might just bring knitting. I find that's a little more easily portable than cross stitch. Because, yeah, I really like having sort of my floor stand and my designated spot to do it and to spread out my tray. Although I do have that black background on my um, Firefly project I'm still doing. So I may bring that. We'll see what I decide to do. The thing is, I can knit in the car, but I can't cross stitch in the car because I'll get motion sick. With knitting, I don't really have to look at my hands. Little glances now and then, but not actually staring at it like you do with cross stitch to find all the holes. So the cross stitch would be when we're actually sitting around visiting. So yeah, we'll see what I decide to do. <clears throat> yeah, because I have a knitting project I'm doing that's little quilt look like looks like little quilt squares and then they get sewn together at the end so it's yeah it's nice and portable just bring a few of those to work on also it's nice for summer knitting because um then you're not having sort of one huge piece of knitting like a blanket or something covering your lap because that's hot <laughs> So at least if the quilt square is only like, you know, eight by eight inches, you're not going to be roasting. I do have cotton yarn, but I don't use that as much. <clears throat> oh, I meant to park that there. There we go. Right, this is a short one, so it's probably only going to be enough for a few. This and this, I should say. Oh, put that in markup mode or it won't work. Yeah, yeah, just three stitches here will be all we get out of it. I used to make a big part of my trip going to the uh, used bookstore, but I don't really read paper books so much anymore, so I don't do that anymore. Yeah, I always said I never would, but never say never, right? <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I've just been spoiled by Kindle being able to make the font bigger. and Also being able to have it read to you. I use the um, accessibility on my phone. So yeah, it can read the books to me. So then sometimes I do that while I'm stitching. It's not quite the same as an audiobook, but. <clears throat> yeah, some of the pronunciations are quite funny. Where if it doesn't know what the word is, it will spell it out. So I had one that kept saying MRS. This it took me a minute to realize they were saying Mrs. The character's name. Okay. Ah, yes, I have two of this color part. That's why. 
Oh, actually, I have three. Yeah, I ended up with quite a bit. Okay. Well, we'll see how long these are. I think I'm going to end one of them off. Yeah, I think that's what will happen. Maybe not yet. keep them attached for now and I'll end one off later if that's the way it works out. Put that right there. Okay. All right, new thread time. Oh yeah, definitely. 38, 48. Oh, pardon me. Mm. There we go. Lots of different shades here. <laughs> so yeah, as you can see, my column here is not perfectly straight, but that's okay.
Working out of the diagonal once again, but that's okay. Yeah, no matter how hot it is, I'm still wearing slippers. My feet are still cold. Uh, my circulation sucks. I went and had my thyroid checked and everything, but they couldn't find anything wrong, so... I just deal. I tried buying some of the um, compression circulation socks that diabetics use, but didn't really make any difference. So, yeah. I find sometimes I'll actually just alternate sitting on one of my feet, fall them out a bit. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Trying to move and search at the same time, that won't work. Okay, so I think this is where one of these is gonna be ended. Yeah. Yeah, because, let's see, that one should be long enough for those last few stitches, so. Yeah, that is what I will do. Gosh, these ends are just, I guess I have a lot of stuff finished in this area, with pin stitches, so yeah, it's just a law of numbers. There's a lot more ends to come get pulled up to the right side. And I have to coax them to go back. Okay. Mm 
Oops, okay, make sure I hadn't uh, tacked down another stitch with that thread. I've done that before. It's not fun to remove. <laughs> I'm surprised that one stayed threaded. It was so short, but it did. Woohoo! Like when it works out that way. And I can just end this off. And that's a bright color, so I'm just gonna thread it along the back. There we go. threads away. Not going to be using them for a while. Probably not till after I move my frame since it's right against that pillar there. So yeah. Yeah, I actually saw one where somebody was trying a four diagonals out like a, uh, like a pinwheel. So wow. I think that'd be a bit confusing for me. I'm not sure if they stuck with it because that was a while ago, but yeah, I said I'd be curious to see how they uh, how they did it and if it worked for them. But yeah, one direction is quite enough. I mean, even with my one direction, I still have threads going this way and threads going this way. So yeah, I don't think I need to make it any more complicated on myself than it already is. Yeah, I like seeing all the different ways people people do stitching. So they find what works for them. I certainly didn't always stitch like this. Just kept playing with it until I found out what I liked best for me. And who knows, I may change in the future again. I never thought I'd do parking. I saw other people's parking, just thought, oh my gosh, that looks confusing and isn't it gonna be a mess? And saw that it was definitely not for me, but then, hey, guess what? <laughs> Turns out it was. Yeah, I started doing this, hmm, how long ago? I think 2019, so yeah, it's been, been a few years. And I still did sort of cross country inside the diagonal for a while. So it's been a slow sort of uh, metamorphosis and it may morph some more, who knows? Maybe this isn't my final form.
over to the left again. Yeah, this one isn't terribly long either. That's okay. Just have to add new thread. Did it work? Nope. No, you are not going to go through without shredding. I can see that right now. No, might help if I tried to thread the eye. <laughs> Oi. Okay. Oh man, I think I got a new mosquito bite. Darn. Yeah, I did my walk this morning before it got too hot. But yeah, I think I got a couple of new bites. Darn it. That's ah, one hazard of uh, walking around the lake. There's more mosquitoes there. <laughs> yeah. Oh well. Stick some afterbite on it. Yeah, there's an adult version that stings, because it's like ammonia, but it does work. And then there's a kid's version. I'll have to see which one I can find, because, yeah, my kid did not want the uh, stingy one, which is understandable. But, yeah, something to help with that itching so you don't scratch it. Well, when I first moved to the prairies, wasn't used to the mosquitoes here, so I had really bad reaction. They would swell up, like was terrible. I had to ice pack them, but now I'm more used to it. So now it's just annoying. It's not like it was that time where it was actually swollen and hot to the touch too. It was very uncomfortable. Yeah. My sister always got bit more than me. Even if we, sh when we were sharing a room, they would bite her more than her. I don't know. She must have a, a different scent they like or something. But yeah. Pardon me. <clears throat> all right, I think that is all. Yeah. Let's start a new one. Once I get there. This, and I'll get the other two. Yeah, that are sort of up here. And that'll be it with that thread. Okay, 993. Nine, 11 left. Yeah, this one will be.
Oh, look at that. A nice even 150. That seems like a good stopping point, I think. All right. So thank you so much for uh, joining me here today. And I hope to see you here again another time. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye.